to in introduce all of the elected officials in the House, with the exception of the City Council. Those who are not on the City Council, but are elected officials, would you please stand? <laughs> Mayor Wallen, <laughs> State Representative Stanley, Board of Education member Davenport. Thank you. Anyone else? Hopefully we didn't miss anyone. Again, we certainly appreciate your coming, and we expect you to enjoy this great day. Now we're going to call up a young attorney who years ago, for years, has been very involved in this, this great community, and he has continued to be uh, involved. He's a former Flint City, Flint City Council member, president of the Flint City Council, Attorney Bukowski. Thank you, Floyd. Welcome, everyone. I think it would, be, it would be important here at the beginning to recognize today is Veterans Day and to uh, recognize those who have served uh, to protect our way of life so we can come together like this and celebrate our democracy. I don't intend everybody to stand up and do that kind of thing, but just we need to remember uh, those who have served. <clears throat> I'm here to give a bit of a challenge to the council, and uh, for some of you who are kind of regular around here, you might recognize I've done this before, and I'm going to say it once and for all. I really wish I could look at the council while I'm saying this, because my remarks are really directed at them, and not so much at the youth or the uh, families. Uh, the uh, goal here is to give a bit of a charge and a challenge uh, for the future that they're going to face. Uh, first, I want to compliment the council members, their families, their supporters, for the fine job they did to get them here today. Uh, they, uh, you're here, or they're here because of the support of people like you. And we know we support these folks and wish them well. They're our council, we love our city, we want them to succeed, their success will be our success. I suggest that the main goal of their term will be to work with and return to a new normal after the emergency manager leaves. To assist, this council, more than many, should be nimble in their actions. They will be in new territory. I plan to share a few ideas on how to make a successful service. You are elected as members of the council. This is not a destination, but a journey. And you are in charge of how you will act to conduct this journey. This council is a very diverse group of individuals. The best or only path to success is to act as a group. Not as individuals grandstanding, not venting personal opinions, not ignoring city policies to pursue personal aims. Instead, the majority rules. Thus. The council must act as a group and speak with a single voice. Therefore, you need to develop techniques to work together. Harmony, teamwork, civility, those kinds of things, simple virtues. I hope you discuss with each other the aims and goals you have, the issues before you. Build relationships with each other to make the work more harmonious. Build relationships with those you serve and those you work with outside the council. Now, there are times, of course, where you're not serving as a council in a group. We know you have individual responsibilities. Amen. We know that you are going to be in the community uh, conducting constituent services. We know you have an ambassadorial role to meet with committees and uh, ward groups and citizens to convey the messages from City Hall. Amen. Now, it's not easy to be a good uh, council member. The road to success means that you need to learn and understand the issues. Use the resources available to you. Ask questions. Clarify options. Investigate. Check with staff to find related materials. Talk to citizens. Check with agencies. Do various things to gain more information so you'll cast informed votes. Perhaps most importantly, listen to others and be willing to change your position 
as the issues evolve. There are many resources available to you, but the most important and primary is the city clerk. Our clerk runs a great office. She runs the elections, they're flawless. She also provides the support to the council, bears their packets, is the one who uh, is the link to uh, lots and lots of information. Our clerk is quiet, strong, wise, experienced, steady, smart. The city is fortunate to have Inez Brown in our service. Amen. She will probably be the most important resource in your journeys. Thank you, Ms. Brown. You're also very fortunate to have an incredibly capable mayor and incredibly capable financial manager. They're well equipped, they're experienced. They will work with you to uh, meet the challenges facing this city. Now the challenges, of course, you've got the normal challenges that in ordinary things that a city council runs into. But I submit there's three things that I want to highlight just ever so briefly that make your council term different than other councils. I've already mentioned the transition to the new normal. Uh, secondly, there's a new master plan before you. Uh, hopefully, it gets some study and is pushed uh, forward. Another matter that I'm somewhat uh, concerned about myself, and that is the question of charter. Uh, it was announced here a moment ago in senior program. I was chairman of the Charter Commission back a long time ago, and uh, I in am increasingly receiving questions regarding charter revision or charter amendments. And I encourage study, I encourage the discussions, because maybe the charter we wrote back in 73 and 4 doesn't meet the needs of the city today. So my mind is open on the point, and I think it bears a fair amount of discussion to see if uh, there are uh, changed provisions that should be implemented. Now, one of the things in the charter that I uh, feel quite proud of and I want to mention uh, in fact, I'm going to read a portion of the oath that will be given here momentarily. The portion reads thus, I will faithfully discharge the duties of this office on behalf of all the citizens of the city to the best of my ability. You are elected, folks, from a ward. Your duties are broader than that to the city and perhaps beyond. Now, the policies you adopt will have impacts not just to your ward, but to the entire city and the whole community. So we hope you approach things with that sort of a view. So I thank you for your service. I wish you good luck and bon voyage on your new journey. We wish you well and congratulations. Your success will be our success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Lukoski. Just a few comments. First of all, Inez. I want to thank Inez for this opportunity to be part of this great event. Inez is an outstanding lady. And I think many people, when you get elected to the council, you think she's just somebody sort of sitting there and kind of guiding you through. She has an awful lot of information. When council members make decisions and discuss, she's heard it before, she knows. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask her questions. Uh, she will help you whenever she can. Now, we've been friends for a long time, and we've worked on a lot of community activities. But she doesn't play politics. So everybody thinks, I know you're going to help me out now. You know I don't do that. But if it's community stuff, you can count on her to be right there working with you. So I would encourage you to do that. Also, I would just like to say a couple things to the to the council. Thank you and congratulate you for being our new leaders. You're coming at a great time, a time when we need all the leadership that we can get. Now Flint gets an awful lot of good publicity and we of course get an awful lot of not so good publicity. But as the elected officials out here, Matt Wallet and Stanley, they all will tell you, you will never ever, even though elected officials hope they can always get good publicity, 
We, we love that. But it won't happen. You will get negative publicity. You will get positive publicity. But I assure you, if you do your best and you're honest and you learn to compromise and, and work to get the job done, to complete the task, you will get more positive uh, compliments and press than you ever dreamed of. All you have to do is do your best, work together, be honest with each other and the public. And of course, listen to your, your, your voters that put you in here. Listen to the members who you are working with on the council. And don't think the department heads and the mayor and Mr. Early don't know what they're talking about. Sometime they'll be out in the left field. But in many cases, <laughs> And you let them know when they're in the left field. But in many cases, they will know because of the experience they have. Now, that doesn't mean you have to follow them, you know, every step. But you do consider yourself, you do consider that knowledge, that expertise, and so forth. And when you have something that's different, that's fine. Explain to them why. The key thing that I think for Flint elected officials is we've gotten a lot, of, awful lot of negative publicity. I think we can change that around by just simple attitude. You can agree, disagree, but it's how you do it. And, and the media is looking for some crazy stuff sometimes. So if you give them crazy stuff, they will report crazy stuff. Amen. If you give them good stuff, they won't have a choice but to, to report good stuff. Amen. So young, pe young people, new people, we do wish you the best. You have an opportunity to, to make this a different city. Uh, and this is a great opportunity to be on the council. I'll, I'll say this and I'll stop. Inez told me, you know, it's a short program. So I remember a long time ago, 1979, frankly, I got elected to the Flint City Council. And you know, you come in with all the great ideas, and it doesn't occur to you probably that they all cost money. You know, you just got great ideas. And the first thing that happened, and we probably got sworn in on Monday, just like today. And on Wednesday, we had a finance meeting. And Mayor Rutherford was the mayor there. Mayor Rutherford came. He didn't come, but his office came and said, guess what? We're over budget, 1979. We're over budget. We've got to cut from some money from police and fire. And I'm sitting here, oh, my Lord, I'll never get reelected. I started cutting police and fire on the first day. It will happen. All kinds of things, of course, will come up, and you have to make those decisions. But if you work together and believe in each other, and then when it's all over, do like Stanley and his boys. They go to the watering hole and have a lemonade. Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to hear again from Mrs. Uh, Force Left, great choir, Powers Choir. Let's give them a hand as they come up.